A mom wants to call the police after her husband let their baby cry it out for five hours. The mom posted her story on Reddit, sharing that her husband is insistent on sleep training their 13-month-old infant. The couple had been co-sleeping with their daughter, and she's unfamiliar with the crib. The child hasn't taken well to the few attempts the father has made to sleep train her, screaming and crying for mama for hours. The mom says this sleep training is torture. The husband grew up coddled and spoiled by his own parents, co-sleeping with them until he was a teenager, and he does not want the same for his own child. The mom is ready to call the police as she knows this is wrong, but her pleas to her husband fall on deaf ears. Redditors told her that it was indeed wrong, but that the police won't do anything because it doesn't meet the legal standard of neglect. While some parents believe that letting a baby cry it out will help them learn how to self-soothe and sleep, it can have detrimental effects on the infant in the long run. Leaving infants to cry themselves to sleep can lead to increased stress and cortisol levels, which can negatively impact their brain development. Also, when a baby's cries are ignored, their trust in their parents drops as they realize their needs will not be tended to. There are other methods to help babies fall asleep rather than cry it out. Put your baby in the crib when they are drowsy, create a calming bedtime routine, and create a soothing sleep environment. And if in doubt, have a conversation with your pediatrician. A single dad refused to let his 12-year-old son wear a dress to school in case he got bullied. And now the dad wonders if he did the wrong thing. The dad posted to Reddit, revealing that his son is very creative and wants to appeal to both the female and male gaze. While the dad doesn't mind if the son wears dresses at home, when he noticed his son putting on a sundress for school, he was concerned. The dad put his foot down and told his son he could not wear the dress to school because he would get bullied. He was worried that other students wouldn't be understanding of his son because they live in a conservative area in Texas. The dad described his son's classmates as cruel and didn't want his son experiencing that kind of treatment from his peers. The son changed into boys' clothes, but he cried on the way to school. Some Redditors bashed the father for not allowing his son to wear the dress, but others sympathized with him. People pointed out that perhaps the father might be projecting some of his own insecurities onto the boy, while others noted that the family's location had to be taken into account. It's natural for parents to want to protect their children from bullying, especially in localities where people may be less accepting. Dr. Meg Meeker, pediatrician, implores parents not to shame their sons for experimenting with their style. Dr. Meeker does say it's okay to restrict a boy's dress wearing time if parents are concerned about how the community or the school will respond, but really not to worry too much about what others will think. A 13-year-old's dad made her cut off all her hair after her mom let her get highlights without his permission. In January of 2018, Kelsey Johnson was gifted a spa day by her mom as a birthday gift, and she chose to get highlights as part of the gift. A few days later, Kelsey went to her dad and stepmother's house, and when she returned home, she had none of her highlighted hair, or much hair at all. Kelsey's mom posted pictures of the teenage girl on Facebook, showing her with her hair shorn off and her face in her hands. This Facebook post went viral, causing outrage among commenters and even sparking an investigation of child abuse against Kelsey's father and stepmother. Humiliation is a commonly utilized form of emotional abuse, and beyond that, disallowing teenagers to make their own decisions about their bodies is a psychologically controlling behavior that denies them bodily agency. It's clear from Kelsey's body language in the photos that she's unhappy that her father forced her to cut her hair. No one involved with the situation commented on it after the fact, but several news outlets did report that Kelsey's mother filed a complaint that alleged that Kelsey's father and stepmother forced her to cut her hair short as a punishment for having her hair highlighted. It's clear that this punishment damaged Kelsey's sense of self-worth and denied her the right to make decisions surrounding her own body. A husband asked if his wife had the right to buy a $1,500 stroller. He thinks it's, quote, stupid and unreasonable. He shared his predicament with Rachel Cruz and George Camel of The Ramsey Show, where he revealed that he and his wife have a combined income of around $300,000 a year, and his wife makes about half of that. And after four years of fertility treatments, she thinks she has the right to spend that kind of money on baby gear. Personal finance expert George Camel did not like the language this man was using, saying that she has every right to make purchases with their income, whether she earns it or not. She is part of a partnership after all. Camel encourages couples to ask themselves this question before making any large purchases. Are we buying this with cash for the right reason or are we using debt to buy this only to impress people? 
With making large purchases, couples should communicate and make sure that they are on the same page. If you are going to make a big purchase that will impact you both, it's worth having a conversation about it beforehand. Even if that item is a pricey stroller. The wife had every right to want to purchase it, and since they were comfortable enough to afford it, it should not have caused conflict in their marriage. A teenager told his mom that life would be better without her, so she granted his wish. The mom posted to Reddit explaining that her 14-year-old son had started acting out at home and at school. She tried to figure out what was happening, but he denied any bullying and he told her that 14-year-olds should act out a little. I mean, I have a 14-year-old that has never said that, but go on. The mom told her son that this behavior was not allowed in her house, which included swearing at his parents, swearing at his teacher, and much more. The two went back and forth for a while when the son blurted out, my my life would be better if I didn't have a mother. The comment hurt, but she decided to grant him his wish. She prepared dinner for herself and her husband, but told her son that he could make himself something from the freezer. She didn't make him breakfast the next morning and informed him that he would have to find his own way to school via the bus. Soon enough, this woman's mother-in-law called, accusing her of being a horrible mother and called her petty for the punishment. The woman thought it was a good way to discipline her son and make him grateful for what he has, but she started to think maybe she'd messed up. Anyone with a teenager can tell you, disciplining teens can be particularly challenging. This mom was unable to figure out what was causing her son's behavior as teens tend to prioritize privacy. According to Very Well Family, when a teen misbehaves, the punishment should fit the crime, so to speak. Natural consequences are highly effective in teaching life lessons, and this mom was able to teach her son that actions have consequences. Just because he's 14 doesn't mean he should be disrespectful or act out. What do you think? Did the punishment fit the crime? Anxious and depressed dads raise kids who are smarter and better behaved. We've known for years that parents' mental health struggles can have deleterious effects on their kids. A recent study found that 1 in 14 children have at least one parent with poor mental health. And there is a direct correlation with not only poor mental health in their children, but poor physical health too. But newer research looked into the impact on kids of specifically their father's depression and anxiety. And fascinatingly, the results were the complete opposite of the researchers' own hypothesis. Kids of anxious and depressed dads had better attention spans higher IQs, and more self-control. Why? The researchers theorized that anxious and depressed dads' own mental and emotional struggles might make them more empathetic toward their kids and hence have better parental attunement, which refers to parents' awareness of and responsiveness to their children's emotional state and needs. But as always, moms don't get a break here. The same is not true of anxious and depressed moms, whose mental health issues have been shown to have myriad negative impacts on children, including while in utero. But the researchers theorized that the benefits of anxious and depressed dads might be an adaptive mechanism for canceling out the negative impacts of a mom's mental health struggles. Teamwork! The study's authors say more research still needs to be done to figure out exactly what's going on here. Still, it should be a comfort to moms and dads to know that their personal struggles just might be giving them insight that's making them better parents. A mom wonders if making her son eat off of dirty dishes that he refused to clean was taking things too far. In a Reddit post, the mom explained that her 17-year-old son hates chores and does them poorly on purpose. The family rotates chores, and apparently getting her son to do anything chore-like is a constant battle. When it's his turn to do the dishes, he does such a bad job by overpacking the dishwasher and failing to rinse the dishes that dishes have to be hand-washed after the fact if the family wants to eat on them. This mom has tried to talk to her son about it, but he just says that the dishwasher sanitizes them, even though the dishes come out still caked with food. One night, this mom had had enough and said that her son would be eating off of the dishes that he had cleaned. He went pale, protesting that it was gross and begging her to reconsider, but this mom would not back down. And the plan worked. Next time he did dishes, they came out spotless, but the son was angry. The mom felt bad after the fact and questioned the punishment, but she was sick and tired of his weaponized incompetence. People on Reddit agreed that the punishment was justified. And according to experts, the most effective way to discipline teens is through natural consequences rather than punishment, which is exactly what this mother did. While your teen may be angry about it, they do have to face consequences for their actions, and that discipline is good for them in the long run. 
If you're one of these five mom types, you might be raising little a-holes. And if you've ever thought, my kids are little a-holes, one of these reasons might be why. You're the mom who uses Pinterest as her inspiration for everything. You like to do things up big and elaborate, and you assist your child doing their science project for them, not because you're controlling, but because you're guiding them down that overachieving path to adulthood. You're the mom who forces her healthy, organic eating on her offspring. But what you're really doing is ensuring that your child is going to run off to college as fast as they can for no other reason than that they have a cafeteria. You are the mom who is way too into free-range parenting. You don't need to be a helicopter mom, but you also don't need to set your kids free every day in the search for independence. You're not raising an independent child, you're probably raising a juvenile delinquent. You are the mom who can't let go. This is the kid who grows up unable to function on their own because attachment parenting turned into dependence parenting. You can love your kids, but at some point you need to let them go. You are the mom who won't shut up up about her honor roll kid. Be careful, your kid may end up thinking they are better than everyone else. In all seriousness though, parenting is tough. When you have those not so great days, stop, take a breath, and remember what's great about your kid. And if you are overwhelmed, seek out help. It takes a village after all. A mom admitted that if she didn't hire help, she wouldn't enjoy being a mother. Hey, she's being honest about it. Alyssa Saramit said in a TikTok video that she couldn't imagine being the only person responsible for making sure her house was clean, doing the cooking, and then still having to give her baby attention. She says that a mother ends up being a chef, a nanny, a maid, and a parent all rolled into one, and that we're basically conditioned to believe that, quote, womanhood is suffering. Sarah Met is a huge proponent of women finding a life outside of motherhood, even if that means hiring your village. According to data acquired by the Pew Research Center, mothers are more likely than fathers to say that being a parent is tiring and stressful most or all of the time. It's been proven time and again that mothers who devote every waking moment to taking care of their house and children suffer tremendously, whether it's from increased stress, anxiety, depression, or physical depletion. Being a mother is a beautiful thing, but it should be more than just constant sacrifice. Also, there's more to life than being a mother and women should not feel bad for taking time for themselves. Is Sarah Met essentially saying the quiet part out loud? A dad made his teenage daughter shave her head after she bullied a girl with cancer. A bit extreme? He caused an uproar on Reddit in his since-deleted post. Apparently, his daughter had bullied a student who had lost her hair from cancer, including pulling off her wig. The two girls apparently had some pre-existing bad blood and were having an argument about some gossip surrounding the daughter's boyfriend. Still, the father felt his daughter's behavior was unacceptable and she tried to excuse her behavior by saying the other girl deserved it. The father gave his daughter two choices for punishment, either have all of her electronics thrown away or shave her head. She agreed to shave her head and the dad forbade her from wearing wigs. People, including this girl's mother, think that dad went way overboard. Redditors called him out for being a bully and said that he's using abuse and humiliation. But effective discipline involves a collaboration between parents and children so that they can come up with a proactive solution, rather than the adult just imposing their will on the child. Parents should aim to discipline their children instead of punishing them, because punishing just penalizes the behavior rather than modifying it. In this case, the dad could have made it a teaching opportunity by using logical consequences that fit the behavior. Instead, he gave his daughter two choices, and neither of them were quite fair. A woman made her nephew cry by taking back his Christmas gift and giving it to her own son. She took to Reddit to share the story, which ended with her sister saying that she would never see them again and her nephew in tears. You see, her own son had recently been gifted a gaming system for his 11th birthday. This mom and aunt decided to make the holiday special for her nephew by gifting him the same gaming system. It was already wrapped and under the tree. Then the sister and nephew came to visit. The two boys went upstairs to play video games on the 11-year-old's new system. About 30 minutes later, Later, this woman's son came to her crying. Someone, her nephew, had thrown the gaming system down the stairs and smashed it to pieces. The nephew laughed, saying it was a stupid baby toy and that he'd seen people smash them online. This sister blamed the mom for letting the kids play unsupervised. So this mom took action. She walked over to the Christmas tree and grabbed the gaming system meant for her nephew. She pulled off the gift wrap and gave it to her son. The nephew realized what happened and began to cry that her son had stolen his system. Her sister was livid and said that she would never see them again. When other family members 
members found out what happened, they called this woman to tell her that she was wrong, but she did not see it that way. Her nephew was 13 after all, and even though he probably destroyed the system out of jealousy, he was old enough to know better. But what she did may seem drastic, experts agree that when it comes to disciplining teens, their actions directly dictate the punishments. This teen broke his cousin's gaming system, and now he loses the privilege of getting one for Christmas.